I've made this video heading into each of the past three seasons. I figured why not keep the tradition going and talk about some players that I think need to bounce back in this upcoming season. I think in those other videos, we only talked about five players. Today, we're actually going to talk about eight. Originally, I was going to do this video in a one from every team format where we pick a bounce back candidate from all 31 NHL teams. But for a lot of teams, I found they didn't really have a player I felt needed to bounce back. So I figured I would just narrow it down to the eight players I think need to bounce back the most before we go any further be sure to go follow me on instagram and twitter to stay connected you can also go check out my gaming channel if any of those things interest you links will be down below in the description and of course if you guys are new to the channel and you want to see more nhl content like this be sure to hit that subscribe button and now let's begin let's start off with the most obvious one and that is goaltender sergey bobrovsky for the florida panthers i feel like i have talked about him a lot over the past year to me he was the most disappointing player from the 2019-20 nhl season especially when you consider the contract that the Panthers gave him. He has an annual cap hit of $10 million through the 2025-26 season, and his first year in that contract, he put up a 900 save percentage, and for the majority of the year, it was below 900. That is just not good enough. Florida is paying Bobrovsky to be a Vesna caliber goaltender like he was for the majority of his tenure with the Blue Jackets, and he was not even close to Vesna caliber this year. He was well below league average. If Bobrovsky plays like that again this upcoming season, I don't see Florida being a playoff team to me, Bobrovsky has the most pressure on him out of any player in the league to bounce back. You look at the last time he had a bit of a down year in 2015-16 with the Blue Jackets, he followed that up by putting up a 931 save percentage and winning the Vesna Trophy the following season, so he's bounced back before. Let's hope he can do it again for the Panthers' sake. If he doesn't, at 32 years old, this contract could quickly be looked at as the worst in the entire NHL. Next up, we have a player heading to a brand new team, Josh Anderson of the Montreal Canadiens. To me, the whole Domi Anderson trade and then the Anderson contract with Montreal was one of the more surprising things of the entire offseason so far. Just because Josh Anderson had been coming off of a season in which he only played 26 games due to injury and in those 26 games he scored just one goal. It was kind of a miserable year for him. So it was definitely surprising to see Montreal put so much stock in him, trade away a pick along with Max Domi to bring him in and then sign him to a very lucrative contract. He has an annual cap of 5.5 million through the 2020 26-27 season. To me, it was a no-brainer to have Josh Anderson in this video of players who need to bounce back the most, especially considering he was traded to Montreal, and that's a place where if you don't play well, you're heavily criticized by the fans, you're heavily criticized by the media. I wouldn't say it's on par with Toronto and their media and their fan base, but there is a lot of pressure that comes with being a member of the Montreal Canadiens, so Josh Anderson, I think, has to have a big year, like be a 20-goal scorer at least if we do play a full 82-game season, and that really isn't as asking a whole lot because this is a guy who scored 27 goals and put up 47 points in the 2018-19 season. If he can get back to being that player, then I don't really think we're going to hear too many people complaining about his contract or complaining about what Montreal gave up to bring him in. I'm sort of cheating here because we're going to talk about two players at once. I figured I'd just put these guys together, but it's San Jose's goaltending duo Martin Jones and Devin Dubnik. With how loaded the goalie market was this offseason, of course a lot of them are off the market now, it baffles me that San Jose went out and decided to pursue Devin Dubnik. Their goaltending situation got worse. It was Aaron Dell and Martin Jones, and now you have Dubnik and Jones, who were legitimately two of the worst goalies in the NHL last season. For a team like the San Jose Sharks, who just had a miserable season, riddled with injuries, a lot of guys just not playing well, they didn't even qualify for the playoffs in a 24-team format, they're obviously looking to bounce back as a team. And if Jones and Dubnik don't bounce back, or at least one of those guys, then I don't see a scenario where San Jose gets back to where they want to be. I'm definitely intrigued to see how this plays out. It's a bold strategy to say the least to go with these two guys as your goaltending tandem when you're a team that wants to get back into the playoffs. I'm not really confident in it, but hey, I mean, goaltending in the NHL is extremely random. That's the silver lining here, I suppose. One year you can have a guy who's miserable and the next year he can be a Vezina Trophy candidate. You really just never know. So I definitely do think it's very important that at least one of these guys are much better better than they were last season. If not, then I really do think the Sharks could be in for another tough year. Moving on now to the next player, we have Jacob Truba, defenseman for the New York Rangers, another player that in the first year of their big contract really disappointed. This is a guy who now has an annual cap hit of $8 million through the 2025-26 season, and he was probably the third best defenseman on the Rangers behind Tony D'Angelo and Adam Fox. On that type of contract, the Rangers are expecting Jacob Truba to be 
their number one blue liner, and he definitely was not that this past season. His offense dropped. He had just 27 points in 70 games. I know a lot of people aren't a big fan of plus minus, but he finished as a minus 12, and that was actually the first time in his career he finished a season in the minus. On top of Truba's not so great play, I feel like it looks a little bit worse because you take a look at the pieces that the Rangers traded to the Jets to bring Truba in. Neil Pionk had a fantastic year in Winnipeg, and Vili Hanola is looking like a great prospect. I still remember when this trade originally happened. So many people were saying that the Jets got fleeced. I don't think you're going to hear many people saying that now. So this is a pretty obvious one, Jacob Truba being in here. He just has to be better when you consider what the Rangers gave up and the type of contract that they gave him. And Truba is definitely capable of bouncing back. We saw what he can do in Winnipeg. We know the type of defenseman he can be. And also, he's only 26 years old. It's not like he's past his prime or anything. So I wouldn't really worry about Jacob Truba just yet after one down year. But if he doesn't bounce back and has another season similar to the one that he just had, then maybe we can start to worry a little bit. Next up, let's talk about one of my favorite players in the NHL, Victor Arvidsson, winger for the Nashville Predators. 15 goals, 28 points in 57 games. A bit of a disappointing year in terms of offensive production for Arvidsson, especially when you consider the amazing 2018-19 season that he had, where he had 34 goals in 58 games. He was third in the entire NHL in goals per game, only behind Ovechkin and Dreisaitl. Would have easily cracked 40 had he not got injured. So in one less game this year, he had 19 less goals. So that's a pretty significant drop off. And I feel like that is one of the reasons why Nashville was a pretty mediocre team in offense. I think they were like middle of the pack in the NHL in goals per game, which contributed to Nashville kind of just being a mediocre team in general. They really weren't the team everybody expected them to be. At the time of the pause, they were fourth in the central with 78 points. So they did qualify for the play-ins, but of course lost to the Arizona Coyotes. So Nashville as a team is definitely looking to bounce back and Victor Arvidsson as I would say their best goal scorer ahead of somebody like Philip Forsberg should be looking to bounce back as well. He had three goals in the four playing games against the Coyotes so he was definitely looking good there. I definitely wouldn't say there's a ton of pressure on Arvidsson like there is on some of the other guys we talked about in this video but you definitely like to see him get that goal scoring back up because Nashville's much better off when he's on top of his game and scoring at the pace that we know he can. Next up we have another player who's going to be suiting up for a new team, Brayden Holpe of the Vancouver Canucks. I know I said Montreal is a tough place to play and there's a lot of pressure on you there. Well, Vancouver is similar. If you don't perform well there, you're going to get torn apart by the media and the fans, especially considering Holpe's kind of like the replacement to Jacob Markstrom, who obviously signed with the Calgary Flames. Markstrom was so good over the past couple of seasons in Vancouver and was definitely a fan favorite. So Brayden Holpe's got some pretty big shoes to fill. If he wants to satisfy the Canucks and their fan base, he's going to be much better than he was this past season for the Capitals, where he finished with an 897 save percentage, a 3.11 goals against average, had a solid record, but I mean, if you're the goaltender for a powerhouse like the Capitals, you're going to have a lot more wins than losses. So let's hope Holby bounces back with the Canucks. I made a video on this signing however many weeks ago it was, and I said in that video, I'm actually a pretty big fan of this signing because Vancouver didn't really overpay to bring him in. A $4.3 million cap hit for just two years for Brayden Holpe really isn't that bad. Another thing I want to mention as to why I think there is a lot of pressure on Holpe to bounce back, just on top of the fact that he's playing in Vancouver and trying to replace Markstrom, is Thatcher Demko showed in the playoffs that he's probably ready to take on a bigger role. So let's just say Holpe has a two-week stretch where he's not really playing well. I honestly don't think it's too far-fetched to say Thatcher Demko could steal that starting job. Continuing on now, we have another player who's going to be suiting up for a new team, Tyson Berry of the Edmonton Oilers. Now, I don't think there's a lot of pressure on him from the standpoint that he got a big contract from Edmonton and he has a lot to live up to or anything like that. It's actually sort of the opposite to that. He only signed a one-year deal with the Oilers. It's a really low-risk move for Edmonton, but for Tyson Berry, he's going to be UFA again next offseason, and he's going to play well to put himself in a position to get a solid contract. With Berry being 29 years old, I'm sure he wants to get that long-term security in a contract and of course get the type of money that he wants and if he has a season similar to the one that he just had in Toronto especially when you consider the current state of the NHL that's going to be pretty difficult. It's not like Barry had an awful year in Toronto. He still put up 39 points but compared to the 57 points he put up in 2017-18 and the 59 points he put up in 2018-19 it was still pretty disappointing and I'm bringing up points so much here with Barry because he is purely an offensive defenseman. He's not a 
guy you have for defense. He's somebody that is there to provide offense, to produce points on the power play. And now with the Edmonton Oilers, he's going to be in a perfect situation to do that. He's going to play in the power play with guys like McDavid and Dreisaitl, hopefully put up a ton of points. And like I said, put himself in a position to get a nice contract next off season. And now the final player we're going to talk about in today's video, another really obvious one here, Jeff Skinner of the Buffalo Sabres, another player who had a pretty disappointing season in the first year of his big contract. Just 14 goals for Skinner this season in 59 games compared to the 40 goals he had in 82 games last year. It still baffles me that they gave him a contract that pays him $9 million a season. Even though he put up 40 goals, that's still a ton of money for Skinner. And it already looks like one of the worst contracts in the NHL. Even if Skinner puts up like 20 goals and 45 to 50 points next season, that's still not great production for the type of money that he's making. Skinner has to be better, especially if Buffalo wants to finally make that step forward and become a team at least fighting for a playoff spot come the end of the season. They signed Taylor Hall. They brought in Eric Stahl. Their top six has the makings of being really good. I'm not saying Jeff Skinner has to score 40 goals, but if he can be a 30 goal guy in the 55 to 60 point range, that gives Buffalo the ability to put out two really solid scoring lines if they want to go with Eichel, Reinhardt, and Olison, and then Stahl, Hall, and of course Jeff Skinner. Again, like I said, this was a pretty obvious one, a no-brainer to have him in the video. That type of contract, the type of money he's getting, he has to be better. Jeff Skinner has to bounce back this season. That is going to wrap up today's video. Those were eight players that I think need to bounce back the most in the 2020-2021 season. Well, nine players kind of since I talked about Jones and Dubnik at the same time. If there's anybody that I didn't talk about in today's video that you think really needs to bounce back, be sure to let me know down below in the comment section. Of course, if you did enjoy today's video, please be sure to leave it a like. That is the best way to show your support. And of course, if you guys are new to the channel and you want to see more NHL content like this, be sure to hit that subscribe button and I will talk to you all in the next video. Thank you